Hello and welcome to 15 Minute Game. My name is Tony and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos. Hello fellow survivors and welcome to the July 10th update for Dead Matter. And we start off with closed alpha. Is it here? Add dramatic pause here. No, no it's not. Um, <laughs> I guess you guessed that. Anyway, so what do they say about it? Closed alpha. While we can't say much about the roadblock itself, we can say that significant progress has been made over the last week and that we're getting there. Good. Unfortunately, this is not the update that I get to tell you that we're there just yet. However, as with the last update, we've been working hard on optimizations, bug fixes and polishing the game in preparation for the closed alpha. So it looks like the knocker tells what this roadblock is and to me still sounds quite significant. It's still going on. But we will see. And on to development where we see all the new stuff and some cool videos and pictures. So Kyle has been working on polished passes for the effective navigation and pathfinding, player construction and snapping improvements. He has also worked with Dave, our sound engineer, to get the new car crash sound effects set up in game. Gunslinger has been polishing the grenade slash thrown item systems, improved the Molotov cocktail fire spread, helped with adding in some new weapons and continued optimizing the infected. Players can select their desired thrown items from the menu, then press the grenade slash thrown item hotkey to continue throwing that weapon type as long as more remain in their inventories. The fire that spreads from Molotovs has been improved. Players will find that Molotovs will be incredibly dangerous to the infected, other players and themselves. And while the fire spreads far in the open, it is properly occluded, I think that's how you pronounce that, when thrown indoors. No phantom splashes of fire spilling through walls. Well placed Molotovs will have a great effect on any targets unfortunate enough to be grouped up. Fortunately for players, the infected aren't known for their advanced tactics. Riz has gotten a fan favourite weapon modelled, textured and ready to go. Meet the Katana, a much requested melee weapon for the well studied blade user. Players will be able to find manufactured Katanas around the game world and, which is quite interesting, also be able to scrounge together the right materials to make their own if they have the necessary tools. Player made Katanas will have a rougher look to them and it shows that they've been put together using whatever materials and parts players have found in the game world. There are also going to be some tactical options, so you can see all the pictures on screen now. And there's a variety of colours as well, yay! What more do you want? Colours, colours, colours. Um, I'd probably use black, I think, on there. Um, Hax has been working on getting the improved EDA pistol set up in games, smashing animation bugs and getting more soundscapes set up throughout the game world. Speaking of the EDA, Stefan has finished the texture work on the model we highlighted in last week's update. It looks incredible, just have a look at the pictures on screen. I mean. Some of the pictures you wouldn't even tell it's a game, like if you looked at it you'd be like wow that's actually realistic, it looks incredible, I can't wait to pick that gun up in game. Dogtooth has been working on polishing the player and infected face modules, as well as morphing for NPCs so they can show a little emotion during the apocalypse. I think I would mainly be scared, sad and probably hungry. Probably hungry first I guess, because I know what I'm like, <laughs> if I don't have your three meals a day, I'm nearly get grumpy. Nomad has added more barricades, reinforcements and utility items that players will be able to construct with their claim plots to better protect and utilise their bases. Players will be able to use barrels for water collection, add storage to their bases and construct ramps on their fortifications to gain the high ground on their attackers. There will also be able to add lockable door to the walls for extra security and ease the passage into their bases. Nomad has also been adding barricading solutions for the interior and exterior of player bases. Players will be able to add a simple chain, a wooden bar, and up to a sturdy metal bar to better secure their doors. And this looks really cool. Uh, again, everything in this game just looks cool. It's exactly what I've wanted in a survival game, them proper barricade mechanics, them survival things that are built in. So I can't wait to play. Anyway, for the exterior, Nomad has added sturdy metal bars that can be added to the windows for that extra layer of security to keep the infected or players from easily smashing in the windows. And again, 
These look very good. I wonder if you can cut through them. It'll be interesting to find out if you get like an angle grinder. Uh, not that I'll attack other players' bases, but I guess they're going to be on um, you know normal buildings around the world too. All right, guys, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I just can't wait to get my hands on this game. It's been a good development update. I've liked a lot of the stuff they put in there. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all next week. Goodbye.